Hello friends, welcome to this YouTube channel. Today we are going to solve a couple of numerical problems on network reduction methods. By solving these problems, we shall learn how to determine Thevenin's resistance or Norton's resistance between any two terminals of a resistive circuit using start to delta or delta to start transformation. Let us go through the guiding equations. Here three resistors R1, R2, R3 form a star and three resistors R1, 2, R2, 3, R3, 1 form a delta. These two systems will be equivalent when the resistance measured between any two terminals is same in both of the systems with the third terminal open. For delta to start transformation, we shall first calculate R E Q equals to R12 plus R23 plus R31. Later we shall use the following relations. R1 equals to R31 into R12 divided by R E Q. R2 equals to R12 into R23 divided by R E Q. And R3 equals to R23 into R31 divided by R E Q. If R12 equals to R23 equals to R31 equals to R, then R1 equals to R2 equals to R3 equals to R upon 3. For start to delta transformation, we shall first calculate. R R equals to R1 into R2 plus R2 into R3 plus R3 into R1. Later we shall use the following relations. R1 2 equals to R R divided by R3. R2 3 equals to R R divided by R1. And R3 1 equals to R R divided by R2. If R1 equals to R2 equals to R3 equals to R. Then R12 equals to R23 equals to R31 equals to 3 times R. We have to determine the value of unknown resistance R such that the forum register consumes maximum power. Given load resistance RL equals to 4 ohm. We know that for maximum power transfer, Thevenin's resistance at Thevenin must be equal to RL that is equal to 4 ohm. We shall now disconnect the load from the circuit and deactivate the battery of 10 volt. The resistance as seen from load terminals A and B gives us Thevenin's resistance. Here, three 3 ohm resistors connected to nodes 1, 2 and 3 form a star. We can write R1 equals to R2 equals to R3 equals to R equals to 3 ohm. We shall convert this star into its equivalent delta. Now we get R12 equals to R23 equals to R31 equals to 3 times R that is equal to 3 into 3 equals to 9 ohm. Let us now replace this star with its equivalent delta. In this network, 9 ohm resistor is shorted therefore its equivalent resistance equals to 0. Let us redraw the network. Here, unknown resistance R and two 9 ohm resistors are connected in parallel. The equivalent resistance as seen from terminals A and B gives us Thevenin's resistance. Now we can write 1 upon R Thevenin equals to 1 upon R plus 1 upon 9 plus 1 upon 9 equals to 1 upon 4. From this equation we get unknown resistance R equals to 36 ohm. 
In the network shown in figure, we have to determine the Norton's equivalent circuit at terminals A and B and the maximum power that can be provided to a register RL connected between terminals A and B. Let us first disconnect the load register RL. In this network, 4 ohm, 8 ohm and 2 ohm registers connected to nodes 1, 2 and 3 form a star. We shall convert this star into its equivalent delta. Let us calculate RR equals to R1 into R2 plus R2 into R3 plus R3 into R1. Using values we get 4 into 8 plus 8 into 2 plus 2 into 4 equals to 56. We know that R12 equals to RR divided by R3 using values we get 56 divided by 2 equals to 28 ohm. R23 equals to RR divided by R1 using values we get 56 divided by 4 equals to 14 ohm and R31 equals to RR divided by R2 using values we get 56 divided by 8 equals to 7 ohm. Let us now replace this star with its equivalent delta. Let us now determine Norton's current. For this purpose, we shall short circuit the load terminals A and B. Now the current flowing through the shorted path gives us Norton's current. Here, 14 ohm resistor is shorted, therefore its equivalent resistance equals to 0. Here, 4 ohm and 28 ohm registers are connected in parallel. They are equivalent resistance. RQ1 equals to 4 into 28 divided by 4 plus 28 equals to 3.5 ohm. Here 3 ohm and 7 ohm registers are connected in parallel. They are equivalent resistance. RQ2 equals to 3 into 7 divided by 3 plus 7 equals to 2.1 ohm. Norton's current IN equals to REQ2 divided by REQ1 plus REQ2 into I. Using values we get 2.1 divided by 2.1 plus 3.5 into 48. That gives us 18 ampere. Let us determine Norton's resistance. For this purpose, we shall remove the short circuit from load terminals A and B and deactivate the current source of 48 ampere. Now the equivalent resistance as seen from load terminals A and B gives us Norton's resistance. Here, 3.5 ohm and 2.1 ohm registers are connected in series. They are equivalent resistance. RQ3 equals to 3.5 plus 2.1 equals to 5.6 ohm. Here, 5.6 ohm and 14 ohm registers are connected in parallel. They are equivalent resistance. RQ4 equals to 5.6 into 14 divided by 5.6 plus 14 equals to 4 ohm. Here RQ4 equals to Rn which is the Norton's resistance. We have obtained Norton's current In equals to 18 ampere and Norton's resistance Rn equals to 4 ohm. Let us now draw the Norton's equivalent circuit and connect the load resistor RL. We know that for maximum power transfer, load resistance RL equals to Rn that is equal to 4 ohm. Now we shall determine 
note current i l equals to half of i n that is equal to half of 18 that gives us 9 ampere now we shall calculate the maximum power that can be provided to the load register v max equals to i l square into r l using values we get 9 square into 4 that is equal to 324 watts. For the circuit shown using Thevenin's theorem and delta star transformation, we have to determine the current flowing through the galvanometer. Given resistance of the galvanometer, that is the load resistance RL equals to 50 ohm. Now we shall disconnect the galvanometer from this circuit and determine Thevenin's voltage. Here, one 3 ohm and one 7 ohm resistors are connected in series. Their equivalent resistance REQ1 equals to 3 plus 7 equals to 10 ohm. In the lower branch, one 12 ohm and one 3 ohm registers are connected in series. Their equivalent resistance REQ2 equals to 12 plus 3 equals to 15 ohm. Now one 10 ohm and one 15 ohm registers are connected in parallel. Their equivalent resistance REQ3 equals to 10 into 15 divided by 10 plus 15 equals to 6 ohm. Now 1 4 ohm and 1 6 ohm registers are connected in series. Their equivalent resistance REQ4 equals to 4 plus 6 equals to 10 ohm. Let us now calculate current supplied by the battery. I equals to V divided by REQ4. Given supply voltage V equals to 100 volts. Therefore, I equals to 100 divided by 10 equals to 10 ampere. We have obtained current supplied by the battery. I equals to 10 ampere. Equivalent resistance of the upper branch REQ1 equals to 10 ohm and equivalent resistance of the lower branch REQ2 equals to 15 ohm. Let us now determine current flowing through the upper branch. I1 equals to REQ2 divided by REQ1 plus REQ2 into I. Using values we get. 15 divided by 10 plus 15 into 10 equals to 6 ampere. Applying Kirchhoff's current law at no day, we get current flowing through the lower branch I2 equals to I minus I1. Using values we get 10 minus 6 equals to 4 ampere. Potential at node B. Vb equals to I1 into 7. That is equal to 6 into 7. That gives us 42 volts. Potential at node D. Vd equals to I2 into 3. That is equal to 4 into 3. That gives us 12 volts. Let us now calculate potential difference between nodes B and D. VBD equals to VB minus VD. Using values we get 42 minus 12 equals to 30 volts. Here VBD equals to V Thevenin which is the Thevenin's voltage. Let us now determine Thevenin's resistance. For this purpose we shall deactivate the battery of 100 volts and redraw the network. The resistance obtained between terminals B and D gives us Thevenin's resistance. Here, 3 ohm, 7 ohm and 4 ohm resistors connected between nodes A, B and C. 
form a delta. We shall convert this delta into its equivalent star. Let us now calculate REQ equals to RAB plus RBC plus RCA. Using values we get 3 plus 7 plus 4 equals to 14 ohm. RA equals to RCA into RAB divided by REQ. Using values we get 4 into 3 divided by 14 equals to 6 upon 7 ohm. RB equals to RAB into RBC divided by REQ. Using values we get 3 into 7 divided by 14 equals to 1.5 ohm. And RC equals to RBC into RCA divided by REQ. Using values we get 7 into 4 divided by 14 equals to 2 ohm. Let us now replace this delta with its equivalent star. Here one 6 upon 7 ohm and one 12 ohm resistors are connected in series. They are equivalent resistance. REQ5 equals to 6 upon 7 plus 12 equals to 90 upon 7 ohm. Here one 2 ohm and one 3 ohm resistors are connected in series. They are equivalent resistance. REQ6 equals to 2 plus 3 equals to 5 ohm. Now 190 upon 7 ohm and 1 5 ohm resistors are connected in parallel. They are equivalent resistance. REQ7 equals to 90 upon 7 into 5 divided by 90 upon 7 plus 5 equals to 3.6 ohm. Here one 1 1.5 ohm and one 3.6 ohm resistors are connected in series. They are equivalent resistance. REQ8 equals to 1.5 plus 3.6 equals to 5.1 ohm. Here REQ8 equals to R thevenin, which is the thevenin's resistance. Given load resistance, RL equals to 50 ohm. We have obtained thevenin's voltage. V thevenin equals to 30 volts and thevenin's resistance R thevenin equals to 5.1 ohm. Let us draw the thevenin's equivalent circuit and connect the load resistor RL. Now we shall calculate load current. IL equals to V thevenin divided by R thevenin plus RL. Using values we get. 30 divided by 5.1 plus 50 equals to 0 0.5445 ampere. Here load current IL equals to IG which is the current flowing through the galvanometer. For the circuit shown using Thevenin's theorem and star delta transformation, we have to determine the current flowing in the galvanometer. Given resistance of the galvanometer, that is the load resistance, RL equals to 40 ohm. Now we shall disconnect the galvanometer from this circuit. Here to 20 ohm and 1 5 ohm resistors connected to nodes 1, 2 and 3 form a star. We shall convert this star into its equivalent delta. Let us calculate RR equals to R1 into R2 plus R2 into R3 plus R3 into R1. Using values we get 20 into 5 plus 5 into 20 plus 20 into 20 equals to 600. We know that R12 equals to RR divided by R3 Using values we get 600 divided by 20 equals to 30 ohm. R23 equals to RR divided by R1 using values we get 600 divided by 20 equals to 30 ohm. And R31 equals to RR divided by R2 
using values we get 600 divided by 5 equals to 120 ohm. Let us now replace the star with its equivalent delta. Let us determine Thevenin's voltage. Here 30 ohm and 10 ohm resistors are connected in series. Their equivalent resistance RQ1 equals to 30 plus 10 equals to 40 ohm. Now we shall calculate current flowing through the 30 ohm resistor. I1 equals to V divided by RQ1. Given supply voltage V equals to 2 volts. Therefore I1 equals to 2 divided by 40 that is equal to 0 0.05 ampere. Here 10 ohm and 30 ohm resistors are connected in parallel. They are equivalent resistance RQ2 equals to 10 into 30 divided by 10 plus 30 equals to 7.5 ohm. Here 7.5 ohm and 30 ohm resistors are connected in series. They are equivalent resistance. RQ3 equals to 7.5 plus 30 equals to 37.5 ohm. Now we shall determine current flowing through the 7.5 ohm resistor. I2 equals to V divided by RQ3. Using values we get 2 divided by 37.5 equals to 4 upon 75 ampere. We have determined current flowing through the 30 ohm resistor I1 equals to 0 0.05 ampere and current flowing through the 7.5 ohm resistor I2 equals to 4 upon 75 ampere. Let us now calculate Potential at node A, VA equals to V minus I1 into 30. Using values we get 2 minus 0 0.05 into 30 that is equal to 0 0.5 volt. And potential at node B, VB equals to V minus I2 into RQ2 using values we get. 2 minus 4 upon 75 into 7.5 equals to 1.6 volt. Let us now determine potential difference between nodes B and A. VBA equals to VB minus VA. Using values we get 1.6 minus 0.5 equals to 1.1 volt. Here VBA equals to V Thevenin, that is the Thevenin's voltage. Now we shall determine Thevenin's resistance. For this purpose, let us deactivate the battery and redraw the network. The equivalent resistance between terminals A and B gives us Thevenin's resistance. In this network, 30 ohm and 10 ohm resistors are connected in parallel. They are equivalent resistance. RQ4 equals to 30 into 10 divided by 30 plus 10 equals to 7.5 ohm. Here 7.5 ohm and 30 ohm resistors are connected in parallel. They are equivalent resistance RQ5 equals to 7.5 into 30 divided by 7.5 plus 30 equals to 6 ohm. Now 7.5 ohm and 6 ohm resistors are connected in series. They are equivalent resistance RQ6 equals to 7.5 plus 6 equals to 13.5 ohm. Here RQ6 equals to R Thevenin, which is the Thevenin's resistance. 
given resistance of the galvanometer that is the load resistance rl equals to 40 ohm we have determined thevenin's voltage v thevenin equals to 1.1 volt and thevenin's resistance r thevenin equals to 13.5 ohm let us draw the thevenin's equivalent circuit and connect the load resistor rl now we shall calculate load current il equals to v thevenin divided by r thevenin plus rl using values we get 1.1 divided by 13.5 plus 40 equals to 20.56 into 10 to the power minus 3 ampere or 20.56 milli ampere. Here load current IL equals to IG which is the current flowing through the galvanometer. We have obtained potential at node A VA equals to 0.5 volt and potential at node B VB equals to 1.6 volt. Here VB is greater than VA. Therefore, load current flows from node B to node A. Using Norton's theorem, we have to determine the current flowing through a load of 8 ohm resistor given load resistance RL equals to 8 ohm. Let us first determine Norton's current. For this purpose, we shall first remove the load from the circuit and short circuit the load terminals A and B. Now the current flowing through the shorted path gives us Norton's current. IN equals to V divided by 2. Given supply voltage V equals to 200 volts. Therefore, IN equals to 200 divided by 2 equals to 100 ampere. Let us now determine Norton's resistance. For this purpose, we shall remove the shorted path and deactivate the battery of 200 volts. Now, the equivalent resistance obtained between terminals A and B gives us Norton's resistance. In this network, 1 20 ohm and 2 10 ohm resistors connected to nodes 1, 2 and 3 form a delta. We shall convert this delta into its equivalent star. Let us calculate Req equals to R12 plus R23 plus R31. Using values we get 20 plus 10 plus 10 equals to 40 ohm. We know that R1 equals to R31 into R12 divided by Req. Using values we get 10 into 20 divided by 40 equals to 5 ohm. R2 equals to R12 into R23 divided by Req. Using values we get 20 into 10 divided by 40 equals to 5 ohm. And R3 equals to R23 into R31 divided by Req. Using values we get 10 into 10 divided by 40 equals to 2.5 ohm. Let us now replace the delta with its equivalent star. Let us redraw the network. Equivalent resistance obtained between terminals A and B gives us Norton's resistance. Here, 1 2 ohm and 1 4 ohm resistors are connected in parallel. They are equivalent resistance. Rq1 equals to 2 into 4 divided by 2 plus 4 equals to 4 upon 3 ohm. Here, 1 5 ohm and 1 6 ohm resistors are connected in series. They are equivalent resistance. Rq2 equals to 5 plus 6 equals to 11 ohm. Here, 
Also in the lower branch, one 5 ohm and one 6 ohm resistors are connected in series. Their equivalent resistance REQ3 equals to REQ2 equals to 11 ohm. Now two 11 ohm resistors are connected in parallel. Their equivalent resistance REQ4 equals to 11 into 11 divided by 11 plus 11 equals to 5.5 ohm. Now one 5.5 ohm and one 2.5 ohm resistors are connected in series. Their equivalent resistance REQ5 equals to 5.5 plus 2.5 equals to 8 ohm. Here, one 4 upon 3 ohm and one 8 ohm resistors are connected in parallel. Their equivalent resistance REQ6 equals to 4 upon 3 into 8 divided by 4 upon 3 plus 8 equals to 8 upon 7 ohm. Here REQ6 equals to Rn, which is the Norton's resistance. Given load resistance RL equals to 8 ohm, we have obtained Norton's current IN equals to 100 ampere and Norton's resistance RN equals to 8 upon 7 ohm. Let us draw the Norton's equivalent circuit and connect the load resistor RL. Now we shall calculate load current. IL equals to RN divided by RN plus RL into IN. Using values we get 8 upon 7 divided by 8 upon 7 plus 8 into 100. That is equal to 12.5 ampere. So today we have solved a couple of numerical problems on network reduction methods. By solving these problems we have learned how to determine Thevenin's resistance or Norton's resistance between any two terminals of a resistive circuit using start to delta or delta to start transformation. Hope this lecture has been useful for you. If you have any suggestion or question, please drop it in the comment section below. If you have liked this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you.